So Representative Devin Nunes uh, and his cow are apparently in trouble uh, being implicated in the attempt to pressure Ukraine into digging up politically damaging dirt on Joe Biden under the guise of fighting corruption. Uh, now, if you've been busy paying attention to at least the Republican part uh, of these hearings, uh, you would be hearing a lot about how, no, 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 um, what this was related to is the fact that it wasn't Russia. And they're tying this back to uh, election interference from 2016. It wasn't Russia. It was Ukraine that meddled in the elections. And all Donald Trump was trying to do uh, is find the server, this this corruption in Ukraine. Uh, and so that's that's why he was withholding the hay, because a very corrupt country, right? So uh, it is this, uh, of course, a nonsense conspiracy theory. Um, and so, look, that's what Devin Nunes basically keeps pointing at every time he speaks at one of these hearings. And so that's his conspiracy theory. A lot of the right wingers, uh, Republicans have echoed that. Donald Trump, of course. Uh, and you also have people on Fox News that talk about it all the time. Now, what isn't a conspiracy theory and what we have recently found out is Nunes coordinating with Rudy Giuliani to help Donald Trump in his pressure campaign. So now phone logs obtained by Congress. Again, these are Rudy's phone call logs uh, show that the uh, Republican congressman, Mr. Nunes, had spoke regularly with Trump's attorney. Now, the phone records appear in a report from U.S. House Intelligence Committee on which, by the way, Nunes sits. So, yes, they have all those phone records. Uh, now, the report is part of a 300-page summary of the findings in the investigation into Trump and the alleged abuses of power in dealing with Ukraine. And by the way, uh, abusing his power would be basically holding up that aid in return for personal political favors from Vladimir Zelensky, basically the announcement of an investigation into his rival, Joe Biden, as well as trying to find that alleged server in Ukraine to then point to the Mueller investigation and say, see, look, there's a witch hunt. It's actually the Democrats that were uh, colluding with Ukraine. Well, let's go investigate them, our political opponents. Okay. Uh, so now, in this uh, report, you can see that there was a network of coordinated information. We don't know quite what information because these are just to call logs. So there's no actual information about what's in it, what they discussed. Uh, but you can see that uh, in it, you have Devin Nunes talking to Rudy Giuliani, talking to Lev Parnes, talking to many others, including even uh, Mike Pence. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, not Mike Pence. Uh, although he is involved. Uh, in this as well, and I'll get to that. So now, uh, the report showed first three short calls in rapid succession between Giuliani and Nunes, followed by text messages and three-minute phone calls all on the 10th of April. So there's a bit of a timeline involved here. Uh, now, later that day, Giuliani's associate, Lev Parnas, who, by the way, uh, is now ready to testify against Giuliani, um, spoke with a man named John Solomon. No, who's John Solomon? Well, John Solomon appears to be an opinion columnist for The Hill. So now Parnas spoke with Solomon for nearly four minutes. A few days earlier, previous to this call, uh, Mr. Solomon had wrote a column talking about the conspiracy theory that there is a server in Ukraine. Uh, and so obviously you want to have these people talk to this person that is writing these columns. So, so Solomon, of course, is pushing that same conspiracy theory. Okay. So now the theory, like I mentioned before, says that uh, Ukrainian officials had supported efforts to prevent Mr. Trump's presidency while shielding Joe Biden's son, who sat on the board of a Ukrainian energy company, Burisma, from prosecution. Now, what would he be prosecuted for? What did Joe Biden's son actually do while he was at Burisma? That would be criminal. I, look, he was on the board. He was getting paid a lot of money for no reason. Uh, and look, I, yeah, of course we know that, right? So yes, he was getting paid a lot of money to sit on a board despite not knowing anything about Ukrainian gas. 
is that criminal? Unfortunately, not. That is uh, corruption, yes, and that is ethically wrong. Uh, and so maybe uh, Hunter Biden should have had some better, I don't know, um, morals, I guess, ethics. Uh, should have thought about, oh, you know, this is going to look bad for my dad uh, because the only reason that they put me on the board is because, well, I'm a Biden. And yes, they might want to influence me and influence my father into making decisions that are pro-Ukrainian gas. Uh, so, oh, look, yeah, that's terrible, right? Uh, criminal? No. What's criminal is actually using your power to have them not launch an actual investigation, to pressure a foreign country into launching this investigation that actually they weren't even interested in. All Trump was interested in, and we find this out from uh, these uh, you know text messages, right? We find this out that, uh, and, and this was also from a testimony from Gordon Sondland, that he wasn't even interested in that investigation, just the announcement. He wanted Zelensky to go on CNN and announce that we were looking into Biden so that he could use that for political purposes in order to attack Joe Biden. Which again, you know, I don't even think you really need to do that. Joe Biden's pretty good at hanging himself in his own words. Have you listened to him lately with the weird story about the, the pool and the black kids and, you know, touching his legs and it's creepy, right? Why wouldn't you just let Biden just talk the whole time? Instead of making up these ridiculous conspiracy theories and actually breaking the law. But, okay, again, so this conspiracy theory that there is this, uh, all, all this stuff's going on, it has been debunked, right? It's, there's, no, there's no evidence for it, but that doesn't stop the right wing from trying to launch phony investigations. Uh, and so here's the funny thing about the server, right? So like, oh, we got to find the server. We got to find the server. That's got all the information. No, it doesn't. That's not how that works. The information is in the cloud, not sitting in the server. Like you can access it in the cloud. He has no idea how this actually works. Uh, and so, look, they also claim that CrowdStrike, by the way. Uh, and so that's the company that, you know, supposedly has the, the DNC server hidden in Ukraine and they say, oh, well, it's a Ukrainian company. Okay. Um, that's strange because as a, it, well, how could it be a Ukrainian company if it has been incorporated in Sunnyvale, California? And headquartered, by the way. So this doesn't make any sense. Um, look, here's what happened in 2016. I know some of you get mad about this, right? Um the Russians took the emails from Podesta. They gave them to WikiLeaks. They knew that WikiLeaks would release them because that's what WikiLeaks does. <laughs> and I'm actually glad that they released the emails, by the way, because we found out about, of course, DNC corruption, which is great if you want to fix the actual corruption and make sure the primary has a fair process and to show that it was a completely unfair process, as we have seen from the emails. So I'm actually glad that this happened, but it was a political operation, a targeted political operation from a foreign country. And so that's the unfortunate facts, right? Uh, so now the Russians, of course, I believe that they preferred Donald Trump, um, likely because he's a freaking moron that would act like a bull in the China shop. And so it would damage the U.S. standing in the world. And right now, today, we have had video of basically foreign leaders, our allies, laughing at Donald Trump. And making fun of him behind his back. Well, hey, you want to damage U.S. Uh, U.S. relationships, U.S. standing in the world? Well, then you, uh, you know, help an idiot like Donald Trump become president. Now, here's the thing. Hillary Clinton, Hillary Clinton would have actually made life a little bit more difficult for the Russians. And more importantly, and this is what matters, U.S. would have pushed U.S. natural gas in, uh, interests in Ukraine. Remember, Ukraine, the pipeline is very, very important. So this is where this pipeline is where all the natural gas flows to the EU. Russia, Russia exports natural gas and Russian natural gas also flows through that pipeline. And so look, 
Russia would love to have control over that pipeline. The U.S. and the EU would also love to have more control over that pipeline. So, look, it all comes down to money. It all comes down to control over natural resources. Uh, and so that's why Russia, in this case, is a geopolitical foe. Okay. Uh, and so, look, Trump, by the way, not a fan of the European Union, not a fan of NATO, uh, but seems to be a fan of Russia because they give him lots of, or had given him and his company lots of money, which is why I think Trump is not in favor of security aid to Ukraine in the first place or sanctions on Russia. He refused to sign them. Um, even though he he was forced to sign them, he said, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. Why? It's because they're his business partners. As simple as that. There's no conspiracy, no P-tape, no compromise. It's just pure money. It's just pure greed. Why would you want to piss off your future once he be, uh, you know stops being president, by the way? Donald Trump's want to go, going to want to go back to business. And so why would you piss off your future business partners while you were, while you were president? And so, and look, why as Russia, by the way, not support your business part partner becoming president? Especially if it does help you and helps you increase your sphere of influence. And so look, uh, because of those ties, and I think it's very obvious these ties are, the Republicans have had to come up with weird conspiracy theories. Uh, and so... Oh, no, it was the Ukrainians. They meddled in the election, whatever. There's proof. It's just hidden in a server in Ukraine that we can't find. Also, Joe Biden, look at all the corruption. In reality, the, um, the prosecutor that supposedly uh, refused to go after Joe Biden, no, he refused to go after corruption. I'm sorry, Hunter Biden. They refused to go after corruption, and that's why the Biden and the international community, by the way, had them removed. And so, anyway, uh, okay, so now there's more correspondence here. On uh, the April, uh, I'm sorry, on uh, April 12th, Mr. Nunes also sp spoke with Mr. Parnas. Parnas then talked with Mr. Giuliani and then talked to uh, Mr. Solomon. Okay, uh, after that call, Parnas spoke with Nunes for more than eight minutes. Parnas then called Mr. Solomon later that day. And then Giuliani had spoken to someone at the White House for more than five minutes. We don't know who. On May 8th, Giuliani also spoke to someone at the White House for more than six minutes. That same day, he talked to Solomon, as well as Parnas, as well as a man named Derek Harvey, who is a member of Mr. Nunez's staff on the House Intelligence Committee. So you can see they have a lot of contact with each other. Now, the report also has a lot of records of calls between Giuliani and the Office of Management and Budget which was, by the way, headed by Mick Mulvaney. So Mick Mulvaney also involved. And so you have a lot of people that are in it. Uh, and again, we don't know exactly what they were talking about, but we knew we do know that they were all talking to each other about something. Uh, and so what, whether it's to protect Donald Trump or uh, to work on their pressure campaign, this is not some shadow rogue organization or operation by Rudy Giuliani. And that's why you see Rudy Giuliani coming on TV or when you saw him, uh, he was saying, oh, no, no, I was, I was told by the Justice Department to do this. We were doing this on behalf of Donald Trump. And now they're all connected, Republican congressmen, uh, and, and so as well as uh, people that are in the administration in the White House. And so, look, um, th this is a problem, right? The problem with having this conspiracy spread out is, is it's not really this, this, this spread out, right? Uh, it's because you have a lot of Republicans that do believe in this conspiracy or at least do so to protect themselves. Uh, and so, look, I'm worried that Republicans in the Senate – even presented with overwhelming evidence of Trump's criminality, are still going to believe in this conspiracy instead uh, of actually voting to convict the president and, and remove him from office. And so I'm really concerned about this. Uh, and look, again, a lot of Republican voters believe in these crazy conspiracy theories. 
Um, and look, there's even people on the left that I've seen. Uh, they're desperate to debunk the Ru uh, Russia investigation because, oh, no, it's just Hillary blaming Russia for her loss. Yeah, I know. It is Hillary blaming Russia for her loss, but that doesn't mean that it also didn't happen. <laughs> there was a, a, a Russia involvement in the election. This was a factor for her to be, but it was a small factor, I think. Um, and all the scapegoating in the world by the DNC and Hillary Clinton is not going to change that. It was mostly her fault that she lost. It was her election to lose. She ran against a reality show TV clown. But she ran as the establishment. Again, I've talked about this. Uh, and, and I'm on the record saying that her campaign died a death of a thousand cuts. That doesn't mean that this other stuff didn't actually happen as well. And so it doesn't change that fact. But it also doesn't change the fact that we do have a criminal president and that his supporters in Congress will still defend him uh, because all they care about is putting their own political and financial ambitions above the health of the country, above the good of the country. And this is the kind of rot. This is the kind of swamp that we need to fix, that we actually need to drain. Hey, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc., we're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYTNation, set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look. You know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron. Patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.